is Rohit Chand and my presentation is on doctrines of creation and providence. Let's start by looking at Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible clearly con and continually claims that God made the heavens and the earth and everything in nature. According to Herman Bevnack, some doubt of significance of this doctrine to the faith of the Christian. Some teach that the days of creation may be long ages of thousands or millions of years, or that such long ages may have occurred because of the days of Genesis 1. In attempting to defend such people, Kevin Connor has said that we should tolerate such beliefs because creation is not a fundamental doctrine anyway. Some see significance in Jesus' death, burial and resurrection and a baptism and imitation of him. They say the creation, creation account is not so essential, so it should not be viewed as fundamental, fundamental to our faith. This unit has taught me to consider the significance and importance of doctrine of creation and God's provi providence to humanity. It is really essential to believe it. Why or why not? I have learned that understanding and accepting creation is fundamental to our faith that God exists and the Bible is His will. These issues must be resolved before we even consider the significance of Jesus' death. I have also learned that we do not believe in God. If we do not believe in God and the Bible, why would we even consider believing in Jesus' sacrifice? Now I came to understand how creation and providence are linked together. John Emerson believes that New Testament teachers sometimes dealt with idol worshippers who do not believe in the true God. Before they ever discussed Jesus' death, they began by giving evidence that such people should believe in God. It's, it's written in Acts chapter 14 and chapter 17. This evidence included the doctrines of creation. Creation is definitely fundamental to a Christian's faith. If I do not believe in the doctrines of creation, my alternative is to believe that I came from no one. I am alive on the earth for nothing, and when I die, I will go nowhere. Instead, I should realize that a loving and personal God has created life in a loving, lovingly planned, and lovingly planned it for us. The doctrine of creation says the foundation of Jesus Christ's arrival. God is our Lord in the middle of his existence. He comes by himself as a mediator of the two to unite heaven and earth. Try to think of nothing at the moment. No humans, no trees, no water, no weather, no energy, no time, no place, no God. Simply nothing. The more I contemplate of contemplate this nothingness, the more obvious I, am, I understand that the notion of nothingness would not be further from the truth. To say that God is to say that God made everything out of nothing fixes the issue automatically. And that is precisely what the concept of creation ex nihilo does. Let's look at John chapter one verse one verse one to three. And it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the Word was God. He He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. I will explain a bit on what my understanding is about creation and God's providence and how they are linked to each other. Creation, according to Richard Overman, means calling something into existence 
that doesn't exist that didn't exist exist before so if that is creation then providence providence means the continue continuation or the continuation of what was called into existence creation brings things to life providence holds them and assures their continued presence in quest for the purpose of god therefore the doctrine of providence does not merely imply that god has a foreknowledge about what will happen and also a description about his continuing action of what he is doing in the world and of what he has started to do since he created the earth at the very beginning kevin connor reveals another aspect that has center emphasis on the doctrine of providence providence is that we call special providence such providence are also god's special acts on behalf of individuals or groups of people if you take example a kind of mist fell down in dunkirk during the war to cover the troops where the sea was extremely calm and smooth at the time and many people of the nation were able to believe that it was a providential act of god the claim god had worked to save the soldiers by allowing them to take allowing them to be taken back into the country the doctrine of providence has taught me that the world and everything inside it is like a great ship been piloted by god himself day by day hour by hour minute by minute and second by second three aspects of providence can be seen from various perspectives as mentioned by mark elliot the first is the preservation feature of god's continuous function through which he preserves the things he may, he has made along with the properties and powers he has provided us with now this is the most sig- significant the bible says god retains what he has created this is a continuing work secondly there is a provi- providential gov- governmental aspect this implies government's continuous action by which he governs all things to a certain end and goal to and does so to ensure the, the fulfillment of his own spiritual intent he is the king of the king of the universe he is the lord of the lords everything is under his control and it's been written in psalms chapter 103 verse 19 and his kingdom rules over all the governmental aspect of god's providence doctrine is a critical significance which continues from the beginning to the end of the bible the third dimension of providence providence that mark has to mark had emphasized is what was commonly considered the aspect of agreement it implies cooperating with god and his supreme power with all the seven eight powers according to the operations pre-established rules allowing them to act and function just as they do according to jones filka the doc- the doctrine of creation cannot begin with appreciation for natural beauty no it can begin as a conversation with science it must begin with the character of the god who is creator in other words the creation cannot be or appear more beautiful than the god who is creator the creation exists as a result of holy good caring just and loving nature of yahweh god existed why before all creations nevertheless i had i had often imagined or started conversation about creation by naming several things created by god how wonderful they are and how marvelous the process of creation was but not first put into into the into consideration the glorious character of god father son and the holy spirit who is the creator reading this chapter has changed my thinking and more enlightened my understanding on creation that out of nothing the caring loving rational and self existing god decides to create and develop the whole universe everything that is seen and unseen 
to show his existence. God has not and will never stop creating new things. And as creatures, I am to live my life for God's purpose. For me, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I have learned from this topic that the doctrine of creation must begin with greater attention being paid on Yahweh's loving, gracious, rational, generous, and eternal character. It's indeed a life-changing thought. God, out of his choice and of free will, made heaven and earth and everything that is. As written in Psalms chapter 24, verse 1, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. My last proposition is that God is a creator of the earth and he will never cause sin nor approves of it. He only permits, directs, restrains, limits and overrules it because he loves his creation. People alone are responsible for the sin. The first chapter of James gives that particular teaching very clearly. Thanks for listening. Thank you.